Hey, this video is about hash consing, the technique for maximizing sharing in data structure. It is simple but quite useful. To illustrate where it is useful, I'll start with some code that I wrote for the previous video. BDDs are a data structure that represents uh, uh, Boolean functions. A Boolean function can be uh, represented by a BDD is either a constant function that does not depend on the values of the variables or it's something like an if then else. You look at the value of a variable and depending on whether that evaluates to true or false you descend in one of the branches. Variables are typically positive integers. Let me show you an example. Uh, we have here a helper function that from a set of variables creates a, a fun boolean function represented as a BDD that is the exclusive OR of those variables. So for example exclusive OR of the variables 1, 2, 3 is represented by this BDD. And exclusive OR of variables uh, 1, 2, 3, let's say 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 should be a function that always evaluates to false because when you take the exclusive OR of a variable with itself you get false and you can just repeat that uh, four times instead we get a big BDD in which all the leaves are indeed false so this will always evaluate to false but it's clearly wasteful the main observation in order to fix this is that if the high and low branches of a BDD are the same then we don't need to evaluate the current variable we can just evaluate one of the branches arbitrarily. So when we build BDDs it never makes sense to build BDDs that have equal high and low branches. To make sure that this never happens instead of using the constructors uh, L and B directly we'll call some functions which will make this check. So here when we make a branch we check whether H and L, the two branches, are the same and if they are we just return one of them, any of them. Only otherwise we actually build a different BDD. Now wherever L was used as a constructor we need to use make leaf. Wherever B was used as a constructor, we need to use make branch. And uh, here I will use a shorthand just so I do not get out of the screen for make for make branch okay let's check whether this compiles it does and let's see what is this XOR now it is only a leaf as we expected, the simple representation. Only now hash consync 
comes to help because this solution to build what is called the reduced BTD has a problem. The problem is that this equality test is a structural equality that descends recursively in the BDD data structure. And that may take a long time, a lot longer than just constructing one value. So hash consing can be viewed as following. Typically, if two values are pointer equal, they're physically the same in memory, then of course they're also structurally equal. Now with hash consing, we're trying to make sure that the converse, that, that the inverse implication is also true, is also valid. And the way we do this is by keeping a global set with all the values that were constructed, with all the BDD nodes that were constructed. And whenever we're about to build a new one, we look in that set and we see whether the value is already there, and if it is, we return that one. Now, this global cache in the case of BDDs is called a BDD base. There is a small problem. If we implement this set using a hash table, then this hash table by default is going to try to compute a hash value for the BDD and if the hash value matches it will try to use structural equality but even before going to the structural equality co to calling that we have the problem that uh, computing the hash value would recursively traverse the data structure so it will take a lot of time to get around this, we store the hash value whenever we construct a BDD node. Now the hash value is going to be quickly available we still have the problem that we need to somehow quickly compare uh, a BDD that is about to be constructed with one that is in the set. So what, what happens here is uh, the following. We will briefly construct a new BDD that may or may not be structurally equivalent with one that is already in the BDD base. And we need to quickly decide that. So in general we will have that physical equality is the same as structural equality with the exception of this value and this value that are briefly constructed here for convenience uh, as you'll see so we'll need to have some sort of shallow equal let me write what I said now
the hash is simply taken from the second component where it is stored. When we compare two formulas for equality, we only need to we don't need to analyze the hash because the hash tables would have done that. And we only need to do a shallow comparison. That will be obvious by the fact that I will only use physical equality. No recursive call. So these are the functions that the hash table will use and they both are clearly taking only a constant amount of time. This one simply takes the second component of a tuple and this one only uses physical equality and some boolean connectives. This elements uh, of that we are comparing H and L have been created before and it is okay to use physical equality for them. It is not okay to use physical equality for F1 and F2 because one of them is the one that we, we've just created briefly now in order to look up in the hash table. It's not possible to implement this hash counts, which simply looks up in the BDD base. Okay, and now since these things, all, all the BDDs are hash cones, it is okay to use physical equality everywhere where we compare them. Uh, when we construct the BDDs, however, we need to also attach a hash value to them. So let's say the leaves uh, get uh, always zero. This is going to be a very simple hash function. Of course, it can be improved. Um, and this is just going to take the sum of the hash values. Okay. And all the functions that are here that used to take a BDD as an argument now need to only look at the first component. It is a fairly mechanical transformation that can be done for any data type, not only for BDDs. Okay, let's see if this compiles. Unbound value BDD at line 17. Oh, here I called it F, not BDD. For function, boolean function. Another error at line 26. I used a BDD where I was expecting an original one. Oh, this one is also a function that takes a BDD as an argument. Um, is there one more? No. Okay, this is fine. 
And now Xor... Oh. One more case here. Otherwise they are not equal. Okay. Now the code does the same as before. Except uh, for big BDDs it's going to be much faster. Okay. One question, one thing that you might want to think about is the following. Suppose we have these BDDs that are reduced, and you saw today what reduced means, but they also are um, ordered in the sense from the previous video, uh, that uh, if you go through some path from the root towards the leaf, and you look at the variables, they will be strictly increasing. So if you have a BDD with these two properties, reduced and order, which uh, are usually properties that people want of BDDs, then if how many BDDs correspond to a Boolean function? Now in general when you have some way to represent a higher level concept, there might be some redundancy, so you might be able to represent it in multiple ways. Is there an, any redundancy in the case of reduced ordered BDDs? That's all.